Hi everyone, it's Mr. Moreau again, and I would like to explain a few things from our Natural Selection Summaries Worksheet. Uh, and first off, I want to make sure that you guys had your own definition for natural selection in this first part. Now, natural selection is one way that evolution can happen. Natural selection, you probably said something about how certain things have advantages for survival and other living things have disadvantages for survival. When those living things that have advantages survive, they reproduce. When they reproduce, they make more offspring like themselves, which means that those traits will become more and more common in future generations. So that's how certain traits and certain characteristics become more common over time. Natural selection shows us how beneficial characteristics are selected for and will become more common. Detrimental or disadvantageous traits will become less common because those individuals will have difficulty surviving. And if you're dead, you can't reproduce. And if you can't reproduce, then you cannot pass your traits on to the next generation. Well, you watch this natural selection video about the rock pocket mouse, and you saw something about how there was a population of uh, brown mice living in a brown area. But then there was also some areas on this land that were dark and rocky. And suddenly there was a black fur mutation in the mouse. So what I wanted you to uh, realize was that the video showed us that the black fur trait appeared. That word appear is, is important. It appeared. So how did the black fur become uh, present in the population at the beginning? That was because of a mutation. A mutation is very often the source of new genes in a population. And remember, mutations are random. Okay, mutations are random. That means that they are not intentional. The mouse cannot try to have black fur. The mouse doesn't want black fur. It, can, uh, it doesn't need black fur. The mutation was random. Black fur happened because of a random DNA mistake. That's what a mutation is, remember. So because it's random, uh, mutations can happen anywhere at any time. It wasn't that um, a black mutation happened because there was black rocks near the mice. No, that would be intentional. Random means that any color fur could have appeared at any time. So this mutation happened to become more common over time because it was beneficial. Remember, back when we talked about DNA, we discussed how some mutations can be good, some mutations can be bad, and some mutations can have no effect. The black fur mutation in the mice happened to be beneficial, so it continued in the population. It stayed in the population because it was beneficial for survival. The next question is why did it become more common over time? And that is because it was a survival advantage, like we just said. So I'm sure you read through my sample answers, but I want to now go through a few things that perhaps you said about the other questions. Let's talk about tortoise shell variety. Now, sometimes tortoises look like this with a low uh, shell, a small opening near the neck, and they have a short neck. Sometimes tortoises look like this, that is called a saddleback uh, shell. It has a very high opening and there is a much longer neck. So how did it first change? You probably said something again like mutations or natural DNA changes over time caused variation or diversity in the population. So we start off with a diverse population of tortoises. And then why did different shells become uh, more common in certain areas? Well, I'm guessing that where this tortoise lives, that is an area where there's a lot of food on the ground. This tortoise, where it lives, there is a lot of food up higher off the ground. So in this location over here with this tortoise, there was a diverse population of tortoises. The ones that have a long neck and an opening in their shell, they probably... Uh, did okay with finding food, but they may have been more vulnerable to predators because they don't have as much protection. But tortoises that have a low shell 
with a small opening and a short neck have more protection. And they can still get food just as easily because the food is on the ground for them. Over in this area here, again, we would see a diverse population of tortoises. Some long neck, some short neck, some small opening near the neck, some large openings near the neck. But in this area, a tortoise will starve unless it can reach food that is higher up off the ground. That means that those tortoises with a small opening and short neck will die. Those tortoises with a large opening and long neck will survive. Because they survive, they will reproduce. Because they reproduce, they will make more offspring with larger openings and longer necks. So over time, we will see a population that is more similar to the uh, tortoise on the right than on the left. But remember, it all depends on what the environment is like. In environment number one, uh, with food low on the ground, a small opening and short neck is a benefit for survival. In environment number two on the right, a larger opening and longer neck is a benefit for survival. So you see, different traits can be good in different locations, but those same traits can be bad in the opposite location. Traits are always optimal or the best for their specific environment. The next organism we look at is us, humans. We have a very unique way of moving. We walk on two legs. Our other monkey or ape ancestors do not walk like we do. So what must have happened? Well, there are a lot of interesting theories that scientists have on how this first appeared. Again, we can say that a diverse population in our ancestors caused some individuals to walk on four legs, some to walk uh, mostly on their back legs, but also on their knuckles, on their hands. That's how we see most apes uh, move now. And then some natural genetic DNA changes and mutations have caused us to walk on two legs. But why did that become more common? There's some very interesting theories that scientists have. They think that early humans may have um, continued to walk on two legs because it was a benefit for survival, perhaps because that allowed us to carry more things with our hands. Or perhaps it allowed us to stand up straight to see over tall grasses to spot predators that might be a danger to us. Or it could be that the way that our bodies were made, walking on two legs uses the least amount of energy. All of those are good reasons why walking on two legs would continue to become common in the population. Anything you said here is probably a good answer, as long as you did not accidentally say something like, humans wanted to walk on two legs or needed to walk on two legs. No, we never want to say anything like that. We always want to say that it was a random appearance of the new trait and say why it was a benefit for survival to continue in the population. For cheetah's speed, I'm sure you know that the faster the cheetah is, the easier it can catch its food. So we start out with a diverse population, some fast, some medium, some slow. The fast cheetahs survive more often, and that is why over time we see more and more cheetahs that are fast are the ones that are surviving. Hummingbird beak length would be the next one. Again, we should start by saying that a diverse population exists. We have some with short, some with medium, and some with long beaks. That is because of either mutation or random DNA changes from parent to offspring. And why do long beaks become common in certain species of hummingbird? Uh, it's probably because that species of hummingbird eats the nectar inside a flower that has a very long flower. The hummingbird needs to reach very far into the flower in order to get food. So those hummingbirds that have the longest beaks will have the easiest time of surviving. Okay, You cannot say anything like, the hummingbird stretched its beak and it grew over time. No, you cannot say something like the hummingbird needed a long beak, 
So it grew a long beak. No, you can't say anything like that. You have to start by saying that uh, it was random changes, some long, some medium, some short, and the ones with the longest beaks are the ones that survive most often. Therefore, you see more of those in the population over time. With the peacock feathers, we have an interesting difference with this. Now, how did they appear? It's the same answer every time, right? Mutations and natural changes in our DNA from parents to offspring over time. Why did it become so common? Well, in this case, I'm sure you've seen this example before. It's not necessarily a benefit for survival. This one is interesting because it's a benefit for reproduction. The picture you see on the right is a male peacock. Those bright colors and spots, that is very attractive to female peacocks. So that is something that teaches us that there's certain traits that are benefits for our survival and other traits that are benefits for reproduction. Both are equally important. So the purpose of this worksheet today was, or from yesterday, was really to make sure that we practice how we describe natural selection and how we describe evolution. We have to start by saying that new traits appear because of random mutation or DNA changes, and they continue in the population because they are a benefit to survival. Those that have beneficial traits will survive, reproduce, and make those traits more common in future generations. Those organisms with either uh, detrimental or bad traits for survival, they are going to die more often, therefore not reproduce, and those traits will become less common in the population over time. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.